Mafia Definitive Edition is finally here, a remake we've known about for many, many months. It features a brand new lighting engine to make the game feel all the more realistic and immersive, along with the use of modern motion capture technology and updated voice work for the characters and cutscenes. It's a visual leap over the original 2002 game, and in this video we'll be taking a look at its performance across several graphics cards at varying resolutions. We recommend graphics cards at five price points, entry level, low end, mid range, high end and enthusiast. We have collectively decided on the cards we would recommend for each of these categories and have benchmarked said cards at the appropriate resolutions. Up first is the ever popular Ryzen 5 3400G. It's an accelerated processing unit, or APU, from AMD, meaning it contains both the CPU and GPU on a single die. It's been our go-to for our $400 budget build on the Psi ever since it launched, and we imagine it will continue to do so until AMD's next generation Renoir sees retail release. As it stands though, the 3400G is the best desktop APU available, and it features four cores, eight threads, a 3.7 GHz base, and a 4.2 GHz boost. Graphics come in the form of the 11 Vega compute units running at 1400 MHz and are often enough for light gaming. That said, our first benchmark at 1280x720 and low settings only just pushed our 30fps threshold of playability with an average frame rate of 31fps. 1% lows are a measure of smoothness and they were on the low side at just 22fps. Turning the resolution up to 1600x900 and performance expectedly drops. The average frame rate is now 23 FPS, but 1% lows don't take as much of a hit with a result of 18 FPS. This isn't playable, and since we're already at low for all graphic settings, there's not much that can be done to improve this. We can just about recommend the 3400G for 720p low, provided you are happy with 30 FPS gaming. This is unfortunate, but something we expected as we found very little scalability regarding the graphic settings when we made our optimization guide. Now we'll turn our attention to discrete graphics and look at the performance of our four cards at the popular desktop resolution of 1920x1080. Our low end choice, the GTX 1650 Super, can be had for $160 and in our benchmark, run at high graphical settings, we found it narrowly passing our 60fps threshold. It provided 60fps for the 1% lows and 64fps for the average. Now whilst this test scene tries to incorporate many aspects of the game, cars, traversal, view distances, etc, it won't fully represent all gameplay possibilities, but we're confident enough in recommending the GTX 1650 Super for playing Mafia Definitive Edition at 1080p high. For those with higher refresh rate monitors, the other three graphics cards tested may be of more interest. AMD's RX 5600 XT yielded 93 FPS average and 72 FPS in 1% lows. The 5600 XT is marginally less than twice the price of the 1650 Super, but only offers a 50% performance improvement. AMD's next best and currently highest offering improved this by about 22% with an average frame rate of 114 FPS and proportionally improved 1% lows. Nvidia's RTX 2070 Super remains our recommendation for the best high-end graphics card until the 3070 comes along but it only provided a 9% lead over the $100 cheaper RX 5700 XT. If you're building a 1080p focused gaming machine for higher frame rates, it looks like the 5700 XT is the card to get if you're also conscious of price. Upping the resolution to 2560 by 1440 and we dropped the GTX 1650 from the testing as it wasn't able to provide anywhere near the 60fps average frame rate we deem a game to be playable at. We can see this by looking at the results for the RX 5600 XT. A card capable of 90 plus FPS at 1080p now barely scrapes through this one with a 62 FPS average. The experience is quite smooth with 1% lows of 53 FPS being quite close to our average frame rate. Again, 1440p proves to be more challenging for both the 5700 XT and RTX 2070 Super but it appears to be more on the former. Whilst both cards were close at 1080p, the Nvidia card coping far better here with an 84 FPS average frame rate. Whilst this is only 9% higher, it is in tandem with the healthy 26% greater 1% low performance. As such, the RTX 2070 Super will offer a smoother gaming experience. Great if you're fine with paying the extra $100 it costs. For those that want 1440p 144Hz gaming as standard, then the only card to consider is our enthusiast class card, the RTX 3080. It smashes the charts with a 138 FPS average, 64% faster than the next best card on the list, 
and provided you can get it A at all and B at around MSRP, it's only 40% more expensive. When it comes to frame times though, things aren't as smooth. Although 1% lows are higher than any other graphics card frame rate, there's quite a deviation between its own. How noticeable this is at 100 plus FPS is debatable and we feel this is more of a limitation with the game's graphics engine rather than the card itself. There has been an increasing demand for 4K in all forms of media and gaming is no exception. Driving that many pixels natively and at high graphical settings has required a shade more power and bandwidth than even Nvidia's best Turing offering, the RTX 2080 Ti, could muster. It should be no surprise that the cheaper cards in our 4K benchmark didn't see 60fps at all. The great discrepancy between the RTX 2070 Super and the RX 5700 XT we saw at 1440p has diminished and both cards output similar frame rates. The Nvidia card is faster by about 7% in averages and 13% faster in 1% lows. A few weeks back we saw the release of the 3080, a GPU utilising Samsung's 8 nanometer node and built on Nvidia's latest architecture, Ampere. Healthy performance gains were seen across the board in our benchmarks when compared to the RTX 2080 Ti and it has become our go-to card for 4K gaming. This is evidenced by the amount of 82 FPS and 75 FPS it provided for the average and 1% lows respectively. With practically double the performance of the cheaper cards and costing almost half the price of the 2080 Ti, provided you can get it at MSRP, it's the obvious choice and only choice if you want to play Mafia Definitive Edition with all the bells and whistles at 4K and above 60 FPS. To wrap up, we saw our best-in-class desktop APU, the Ryzen 5 3400G, only able to provide 30 FPS experience at the lowly resolution of 1280 by 720 and that was all low graphics. At 1080p, our recommended card for the low end has been the GTX 1650 Super, replacing our long favourite of ours, the RX 580. The $170 graphics card proves its capability and delivers a smooth 60fps. If you want higher refresh rate gaming, say if you have a 120Hz monitor or a 144Hz 1080p monitor, then I'd suggest looking at either the RX 5700 XT or RTX 2070 Super for now. For 1440p gaming, we believe that the RX 5600 XT is the best card to go for, for the price. And following our optimization guide should provide a stable 60fps experience. Again, if you have a high refresh rate display, the RTX 3080 is the only card worth looking at if you don't want to sacrifice graphics quality. If you're fine with tinkering or have a variable refresh rate monitor, then the RX 5700 XT and the RTX 2070 Super are worthy considerations. When it comes to native 4K gaming in this title, there's only one card worth considering and you've already guessed it, the RTX 3080. It produced frame rates well over 60 FPS and we concluded in our review of the card, truly makes 4K gaming a reality. That concludes our Mafia Definitive Edition benchmark. If you are interested in our optimization guide we did talk about, then be sure to click over here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I hope to see you again in the next one.